okay uh, so we will continue our last topic uh, regarding assignments I, I had already uh, told you that please submit all the assignments before 30th okay 30th of august because we need to share the status with your papers okay so uh, yesterday we have started the increasing and decreasing and we have solved some questions on the basis of this topic uh anyone has uh, tried the questions from the assignment <clears throat> uh, okay we will um start this okay uh this question we have completed Abdul. yes sir Okay, great. So next, uh, this question, uh, please try this question. Okay. This is a good question came two times 2010 and 2011. So find the interval in which this function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, this is not a strictly they're saying increasing or decreasing. So I will give you uh, five minutes for this question. Please complete. And uh, Abdur, when you have your exams and how many chapters you have completed in your school? Uh, all of you, will you please message me, Fahad and Rifat, how many chapters you have completed in the school and when was your exams? Okay, uh, please message me and uh, continue this question and let me know if anyone have a doubt in this so that I can help. Okay, Abdur. Abdur, then uh, till October, we will be able to complete our first part. And even we can start the second part also before October. Okay. And uh, Rifat, four chapters we you have completed. Okay. And Rifat, uh, which chapters and when you have your exams? And Fahad, uh, will you please let me know when you have your exams and how many chapters you have done? Okay, Rifa, then it's okay. We have already done the three chapters, okay? And trigonometric, inverse trigonometric is remaining. So we can do that in uh, three classes. Okay, uh, Fahd, uh, okay, okay, Rifa, good. Uh, Fahd, uh, will, you, will you please tell me the chapter number or name and, uh, and uh, when you have your exams? Okay, for then it's good. Uh, okay, matrices, inverse, and differentiation. Okay, for then uh, we just need to complete the trigo, trigonometric. So we can uh, complete that chapter in three classes. So that's not an issue. Uh, Umir, uh, how many chapters you have completed in your school and? When is your uh, when you have your exams and please uh, complete this question Omer. Uh, okay, Umir. So hopefully soon we will be able 
to complete six chapters. Maybe in October. Okay, then we have the time. Uh, please, all of you, please complete this question. Today, we have to complete this increasing and decreasing. So I will just give you five minutes for this question. So if anyone have a doubt, please let me know. Uh, no, there is no need to differentiate two times. Okay, we have uh, discussed such type of questions yesterday. For so you need to differentiate a single time. You need to find the critical points. Okay, and then uh, make that table, and in that table analyze it. Okay. Uh, if anyone have a doubt, please let me know. Okay, then I will solve this question.
Uh, okay, Fahad, I will solve this. All of you, please check here. So I hope everyone remember the method we have discussed yesterday. Okay. So, okay. Someone has already solved it. Okay. Abdur, uh, let, let me check Abdur. Okay. So first we need to find the critical points. We have here F which is equal to X plus one whole cube to X minus one whole cube. Okay. Now differentiate. Now dash X. So this is equal to what? Apply the product rule. We will keep this as it is. We will differentiate the next one. We will differentiate the next one. Next is three X minus one whole square. Okay. So I have missed one step. All of you, please write the complete steps. Okay. Next one, X minus one whole cube as it is. We will differentiate the next one. So three X plus one whole square. Now, dash x, this is equal to, we will write three here. So can we use nx and minus one rule at starting? Uh, Abdul, yes, uh, nx and minus one. Uh, but here we have two functions, Abdul. So we have to use the product rule. Uh, Abdul, uh, will you please unmute yourself and tell me if you have any other doubt? If I not, uh, if I do not understood your question properly. Uh, will you please tell me, uh, do you want to say anything else? Uh, no, take... Okay, okay, great. Okay, so we can't use that uh, formula directly because we have to use the product rule. I have used that formula here. Okay, this as it is, differentiate this, plus this as it is, differentiate this one. If we will open this, if we will open the bracket, for example, we will apply the formula of A minus B whole square and A plus B whole cube here both uh, in both the terms and then we will add it then it will become very 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 complicated okay so what we have to do here take out common that will be best so three x minus one whole square x plus one whole square okay take out first of all common so what we will get here x plus one plus x minus one okay so what we will get here of dash x this is equal to three x minus one whole square x plus one whole square and the bracket right two x and one will cancel out okay so we get this there is no need to open the bracket if you will open the bracket then it will be not it will not be possible for you to again factorize that okay so in such a type of questions where you have a power try to solve like this take out common so now we can easily find the critical points so put f dash x is equal to zero so what you will get here, three x minus one whole square x plus one whole square two x is equal to zero. So what will happen? We will equate one by one every expression to zero. So x minus one whole square is equal to zero. So this will give you x minus one is equal to zero. So this will give you x is equal to one. Similarly, x plus one whole square is equal to zero. So this will give us x plus one is equal to zero. So this will give x is equal to minus one. And similarly, two x is equal to zero. So we will get x is equal to zero. So these are the three critical points. x is equal to zero, x is equal to one, and x is equal to minus one. Okay. So even I will find the interval also for you. So you just need to confirm me that for which interval it is. <coughs> increasing or decreasing okay so we will plot the points first point is minus one then we have a zero then we have a one so we have a three interval here first is this second is this third is this and fourth is this one even four intervals here we need to check for increasing and decreasing that's why we will include the critical point okay even i will make a table for you so we have this one minus infinite two minus one we will include this minus one because this is increasing and decreasing, not strictly. Similarly, minus 1 to 0. Uh, just give me a minute. Minus 1 to 0. Next third one is 0 to 1. And fourth one is 1 to infinite. Okay, so we have a four interval. All of you, please check one by one and tell me uh, for which interval it is increasing and decreasing. Okay, please let me know the answer. And today I will not take your 
okay because i need to complete this topic uh next week i will take it is okay uh, for uh, please check in the question they are saying increasing and decreasing increasing and decreasing okay it is not strictly increasing and strictly decreasing okay but that's why for increasing and decreasing we will include the critical points also for increasing and decreasing we will include the critical point also because on that critical point the derivative will be zero so for zero the derivative will be zero so that's why we will include the critical points and we will use the close bracket if we have a strictly increasing and decreasing we will use the open interval for the critical points uh this is clear for yes okay great so please note down this check for the interval okay and tell me the final answer Okay, for I will. So, in the third line. Yeah, sure. Uh, first, second, and third. This one. Yes. Okay. So, Abdul, what we have done here, uh, the this is clear, Abdul. Second one. Yes. Okay. So I have done nothing. Just I have shifted this three, the starting. I have written the six minus one is whole square here, and I have written x plus one whole cube. This is the same thing. Okay, I have just interchanged these. This clear, Abdul? Uh, so in the second step, I guess you have done something wrong. Uh, <clears throat> so the ending of third line. Ending of third line, three x minus one whole cube, x plus one whole square. The same thing I have written here. Is it fine? Abdul, uh, is there any doubt? So, so it must be 3x plus 1 the whole square, right? Yes, it is 3x plus 1 whole square into x minus 1 whole cube. Okay, sir. Okay, the same thing which is written here, I have written here, I have just interchanged the places, is here x minus 1 whole cube is here, x plus 1 whole square is here. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth step. Uh, okay, for, uh, please check here. So what we have done after this, we have taken out the common. So what is the common here? 3. After this, we have x minus 1 whole square is common and x plus 1 whole square is common. So we have taken 3, x minus 1 whole square, x plus 1 whole square. What we have got here? Here we have x plus 1 whole cube, so we get x plus 1. Here we have x minus 1 whole cube, so we get x minus 1. So now this one will cancel out. We get a 2x here. Is this fine for? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So please complete it and let me know the final answer.
Uh, all of you, please share your answer uh, if it is done, or if you have any doubt, please let me know. Uh, is it done, everyone, or you have a doubt how to know which equation we should use to find the interval? Uh, which equation we have to use? Uh, what does that mean, Abdul? So how to find the increasing and decreasing? Okay, so equation you sir. Okay, so you have to use this one. What you need to do? Differentiate the function. Okay, and then factorize it. Once it will get factorized, once it will get factorized, then before finding the before the step of finding the critical point, for example, we are finding the critical point here. So before that step, whatever the equation you have, take that equation. Or we can say the final equation before the critical points. Is it fine? Yes. Sir. Okay, so don't use this. You are correct. Don't use this equation or this or this. Use the final equation. Okay, so use this one to check the interval.
Uh, okay, first, so you are getting strictly decreasing on the first two. So let me check this. Okay. Uh, I will write, okay, I will not uh, draw that complete table, but you have to do. I'm just, I will just check from this function f dash x. This is equal to three. X minus one whole square. X plus one whole square and 2x and 2x okay so we have this minus infinite to minus one i will check for this uh for can you give me a point between this minus infinite and minus one minus three minus three okay that's correct so this is positive okay first one will be positive second one will be positive for minus three, the next one is negative. So this is less than zero. It is strictly decreasing. Minus one to zero. Uh, Fud, will you please give me a point? Uh, zero point two zero. Zero point two zero. Okay, that's uh, minus one to zero. But uh, we have here minus infinite, infinite. Here we have minus one, zero, and one. So for zero point two zero will lie here, but we need here. Uh, for are you saying minus zero point two zero? Okay, okay. Sorry. So this will be positive because here we have a square. So this will be positive always. In the second also, we have a square. This will be positive. Third one will be negative. So less than zero, strictly decreasing. Why third one is negative? Why third is negative? Uh, we have taken this one, minus one to zero. So minus one to zero means a negative number. Is it fine? Yes. Okay. Next, zero to one. Abdul, uh, will you please give me a point between zero and one? Zero point five. 0 0.5 okay so first is positive this is positive this is positive and this is also positive so positive positive and positive so this is greater than zero strictly increasing for the next one of the any point two two so this is positive this is positive and this is positive greater than zero so this is strictly increasing Okay. Okay. So that means uh, strictly decreasing, strictly decreasing. Okay. On which interval? This one minus infinite to minus one. Okay. And we will write union minus one to zero. So we have these two interval on these two, it is strictly decreasing. So we will combine the result strictly decreasing on this interval. Similarly, strictly increasing strictly increasing on these two interval zero to one union one to infinite we can further also uh, write a common result but this is fine so i hope the universal concept is clear to everyone if you have two results and you're getting a strictly increasing or strictly decreasing on that so please combine the result write the union okay i hope this is clear to everyone uh, please raise your hands once it is done so that we can start the next question. Okay. Please complete this as fast as you can because we need to complete many questions today. If anyone have a doubt, please tell me. So why we are writing union? Uh, for if we have the strictly increasing or strictly decreasing on two, three intervals, then we can combine all the results. 
okay we can just write a single line that this is strictly decreasing on minus infinite to minus one union minus one to zero so even if you have three four intervals for which you are getting the same result for example is strictly decreasing then you can write a uh, common language so sorry you can uh, use a uni uh, union for all those intervals okay so please use union if you have two three intervals so what union do i hope you uh, remember the property it combined both the results is it fine for you? yes sir okay done, so sir. i hope done good abdur is it done oh, great rifat and umair is it done yes sir good good so we will start a new question okay this you can do in the homework okay simple question it will take time so you have x to the power four when you will differentiate it you will get x cube and by putting the value you uh, you need to factorize it okay so please try to do this question on your own if you will have any doubt then i will help you but i hope you can do this okay so please note down this again raise your hand we will start a new question Okay, Farad. Very good. Abdur, Omir, and Rifat. Is it done? Okay, Rifat. Abdur and Omir, is it done? Abdur and Omir, is it done? Is it done, Abdul? Shall we move to next? Okay, Omid. Shall we move to next? Omid. Amir, I'm going to start next, okay? Yes, sir, it's done. Okay, okay, great. Uh, this is a very, very good question. Find the interval in which this function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, okay? You know the method. The same method you need to apply here. I will give you five minutes for this. If anyone have a doubt, please let me know. I will, ex I will explain this to you. So we can use log concept here, right? Uh, for uh, why uh, you want to use log? It means uh, this is my general query. Okay, maybe there uh, you have something else in the mind. Why you want to use log for? Because there is a plus sign. So that's not issue for actually uh, in the differentiation when we have discussed the log. So when we will use a log, when we have a variable, we have two, three conditions. When we have a variable and its power is verified, we will use log here. When we have under root and many functions are getting multiplied in that, for example, like this. To simplify the calculation, we will use log or division or multiplication. Multiplication when we have many functions. If there are two functions, then we can easily differentiate those two functions. 
okay so if two two expression two terms are getting added then that's not an issue you can easily differentiate it okay so please don't use log it will become complicated okay so everyone uh, you have the interval 0 to 2 pi so please first of all tell me the critical points If anyone have a doubt, please let me know, okay? Uh, okay, uh, Fert, what is your doubt? Uh, would you please explain? Are the interval one and zero? No, no, the, no, 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 no. We have a trigonometric function here, okay? So interval can't be zero or one. Uh, anyone else got the uh, critical points? Please check here. Fx is equal to sine x 
plus cos x. Okay, here we need to use the trigonometry concept. So please check here. You already know that you, you have, have a four quadrants. Directly. Sorry. Uh, word security. So can we differentiate it directly? Yes, yes, you can differentiate this directly. Okay, so I will explain this to you. Please check here. So you already know we have a fourth quadrant. This is the first quadrant. This is the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant. And this one is a fourth quadrant. So this is zero. This is pi by two. This is pi. This is three pi by two. And this is two pi. If anyone have a doubt, please let me know. Okay, because uh, you have already done this in class 11. That's why uh, I'm not again explaining this to you in detail. But in case anyone have a doubt, please message me. I will explain again this to you. This is a very, very important, or we can say it's a basic of trigonometry. Now, here function is sine x plus cos x, but the interval they are saying is from 0 to 2 pi. Please check here. They are saying it is from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. 0 to 2 pi means the, this has covered all the four coordinates. <clears throat> now, we will differentiate it. Fahad, uh, what you have got? After differentiating this function, cos x minus sine x. Very good. Cos x minus sine x. Okay. What's the next step? Huh? So put x equals to zero. Very good. Put f dash x is equal to zero. So what you will get? Cos x minus sine x is equal to zero. Okay. Now what's the next step? Anyone? Anyone can tell me? No? Okay, please check here. So here we can shift the sine x to the right side. We will get cos x is equal to sine x. Okay, now you have two methods. First, at this stage only, you will find the value of x for which the cos and sine are equal. For example, here you can find the value as 45. Sine 45 is 1 by root 2, cos 45 is 1 by root 2. But I will not suggest you to, do, to find the critical points at this stage. Okay. It will become complicated and uh, it is not possible for us to find the critical points uh, conveniently at this stage. So what we will do, we will write sine x is equal to cos x. This is the same thing. Cos x is equal to sine x or sine x is equal to cos x is the same thing. Now cos x is getting multiplied with 1. Okay, we can write like this cos x into 1. Okay, cos x into 1 is again cos x. So we can write like this. Now cos x is getting multiplied with 1. So we can write here sin x by cos x is equal to 1. As cos x was getting multiplied with 1, so we can shift this cos x here and we will get sin x by cos x is 1. And for what is sin x by cos x? Tan x. Tan x, very good. Okay. Now we can find the critical points. It is easy for us to find the critical points at this stage. Okay. Hope this is clear to everyone. Tan x is equal to 1. Now, in which quadrant you need to find the angle? From 0 to 2 pi. So, you can find in all these quadrants. So, I have done till now. Uh, okay. I will solve this further. Tan x is equal to 1. First of all, who can tell me? Omer. Omer, uh, the tan is positive in which quadrant? First, second, third or fourth? Uh, third one. Tan is positive. You are saying in this quadrant. Okay. Any other quadrant in which the tan is positive? First, first and third. Very, very good. Very good. Tan is positive. So all of you, please check this interval. Here they were. They are saying that from zero to two pi. Okay. So that means the zero to two pi covered all the four quadrants. Tan x is positive, and as Omer has told us that tan is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So we will find out the angle in the first and third quadrant. Okay, this also you have done in class 11, but let me know if you have doubt here. So anyone can tell me a, uh, tell me an, an angle in the first quadrant for which the tan x is one. So 45. 45, very good up there. So we can write like this, tan x is equal to, in place of one, we can write tan pi by four. So we will get what? X is equal to pi by 4. So pi by 4 lie in the first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, we get an angle. 
Here we get an angle which is pi by 4. Now we also need an angle in the third quadrant because tan is positive also in the third quadrant. So anyone can tell me an angle in the third quadrant for which the tan is positive. Uh, how much, Abdul? Abdul, uh, what is the answer? The 45. 45 lying in the first quadrant. Yes, Abdul? So in the first quadrant, we have already found out pi by 4 is 45. Now we need the angle in the third quadrant. So anyone can tell me an angle in the third quadrant. Anyone can tell me an angle in the third quadrant? Rifat, Mumir, Fahad, Abdul. So can you explain this fifth line, why we multiplied with one? Yes. Actually, if we will check at this stage first. So at this stage, if we need to find the critical points, we can find. But what we have to do, we have to focus on two ratio, cos and sine both. Okay. We have to focus on two ratios, cos and sine both. So uh, it will become complicated. So we need this. We need to change this question into a single ratio. So what we can do first, we can write sine x by cos. I need to shift this cos in the denominator. Okay. So to explain this to you, I have done in this way sine x. So what I have done, cos x into one is cos x. The same thing. Okay. Cos x is into one is the same thing. So I have written like this. Uh, cos x into 1. Now, this cos x is getting multiplied with 1. So, you can shift this in the denominator. Okay, just to explain to you that how we can shift this cos x in the denominator, I have written like this. So, that we will get a single ratio, single trigonometric ratio. For example, here we get a tan x. Because at this stage, it is not convenient for us. At this stage, it is not convenient for us to find the value of x because we have a two ratio. We need to focus on sine as well as on cos. So it becomes quite complicated. So we need a single ratio. That's why we have shift this cos x in the denominator and sine by cos is tan. So tan x is 1. Clear, Abdul and Fahad? Yes, sir. Okay. So we get x by 4. So again, uh, I will go back to my question that we need the angle in the third quadrant. So anyone can tell me how... Uh, we can find the angle in the third quadrant. No? Yeah. Okay, please remember this. This is the 11th concept, but you have to use this in the different application of differentiation as well as in the inverse trigonometric functions. Okay, so please uh, remember this concept. If you need to find an angle in any quadrant except the first one, because in the first quadrant, we have an angle from 0 to 90, and the, you know the value. From 0 to 90, you know the value of the standard angles. Okay. So you never face any issue while finding the value in the first quadrant. You might get a problem while finding in second, third, and fourth quadrant. So always use this concept. Always use pi and 2 pi. Always use pi and 2 pi to find the value in any quadrant. For example, here we need the value in third quadrant. So we will add an angle in pi. Because if you will add any angle in pi, then you will then your angle will shift in the third quadrant. If you need an angle in the second quadrant, then subtract that angle from pi. If you need an angle in the fourth quadrant, subtract an angle from two pi. Okay, so always use pi and two pi. So the question is, you will say that why we are using pi and two pi? Why not any other angle? Why not pi by two and three pi by two? Because if you will take an ratio with a pi by 2, it will it will change. You know that sine pi by 2 plus theta is cos theta. So that's why we will never use the pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 because it will change the angle, change the ratio. And in the same way, if you will take sine pi minus theta, the ratio will remain the same, sine theta. Here we have a sign, here we have a sign. Okay. So please remember, always, always use pi and 2 pi if you need any angle in any of the quadrant. Now, please check here. x is equal to pi by 4. We need the angle in the 10 quadrant. Okay. Uh, Amir, uh, not sure why uh, your video is visible to all of us. Okay. 
Okay, so we need the angle in the third quadrant. What we will do? You need one. So first of all, find the acute find the angle for one in the first quadrant. That is pi by four. We already know. Now we need the angle in the third quadrant. So we will write like this: tan x is equal to tan pi. Omir, uh, we are getting disturbed. Okay, so please check why uh, your video is again getting open. So tan x is equal to tan pi plus pi by four. Why we are adding plus? Because we need the angle in the third quadrant. I so already pi by four. sorry, Abdul. So phi pi by four. Yes, that's correct. Then we will get what tan. We will get a tan x is equal to tan five pi by four. Okay, and from this we will get x is equal to Five, pi by This is clear to everyone how to find an angle in any other quadrant. Always use pi and two pi. So first of all, for that value, find the angle in the first quadrant. Use that angle to find the value in any other quadrant. Is this clear? Abdul Fath, Amir, Arifat, Arifat, I have just checked you, know, you would drop off. Is this clear, Arifat? How to find the critical points for this? Okay, great. Abdul, Fahad, Umair, is it clear? Yes, sir. Great. Fahad and Umair? Fahad and Umair, is it clear? Can, 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 if you have a doubt, okay, okay. Fahad, is it clear? Why 5 pi by 4? Okay, please check here. So, I hope up to this point, Everything was clear. Omir, tan x is equal to 1. Yes, uh, sir. Okay, so you have a doubt after this. Tan x is equal to 1. So we will check the interval in the original question. So in the question, they have given the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, from 0 to 2 pi, that means you need to find the angle in all the four quadrants. Now we have checked tan x is equal to 1. That means it is positive. So as you tell us that tan is positive in the first and the third quadrant. So we will find the angle in the first and third quadrant. Okay, okay, Fahad. So we will find the angle in first and third quadrant. Why we are finding this? Because tan is positive. Tan is positive in which quadrant? In the first and third one. Now here, tan x is equal to 10 pi by 4. Okay. Um, this you already know. In the first quadrant, tan is positive, we get this. Now we need the angle in third quadrant also. So how can we find the angle in the third quadrant? Use this one pi by 4. Use the angle which you get in the first quadrant, pi by 4. So we will write pi plus pi by 4. If you will add pi by 4 in pi, you will shift the angle in the third quadrant. Okay. So that's why we take the LC. Pi plus pi by 4 is what? 5 pi by 4. X is equal to 5 pi by 4. Omir and Fahad, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Omir, is it clear? Uh, no, sir. No, uh, where you have a doubt, Omer? Sir, the second last point. Second last point of this one. So, this is clear, Omer, that why we are finding the angle in the third quadrant? No, sir, no. No. Tan is positive in which quadrant? First and third. First and third quadrant. Okay. And what the interval they have given us from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 360. So, that means all the fourth qu four quadrants. So tan is positive in first and third quadrant. In the first quadrant, you have already find out the angle, which is pi by four. Now next, in which quadrant you need to find the angle, Umir? Third. Third quadrant. Okay. So now we will find the angle in the third quadrant. Tan x is one. So what is the method? Always use pi and two pi. So if you need the angle in the second and the third quadrant, use pi. If you need the angle in the fourth quadrant, use two pi. Here we need the angle in the third quadrant. So what we will do? If you will add an acute angle in pi, so in which quadrant you will get shifted, Umair? Umair, if you will add an acute angle in pi, then in which quadrant you will get shifted? The second. Uh, why Umair in second? Pi, this is 180. Suppose if I will add 45 in 180, third, then in third. which quadrant you will get shifted? Third one, okay. 
So if you are adding something in pi, you will get shifted in third quadrant. If you are adding an acute, sorry, if you are subtracting an acute angle in the pi, you will get the angle in the second quadrant. So here we have tan x is equal to, okay. So we need this in the third quadrant. We will add in pi. That's why we have written 10 pi plus pi by 4. Okay. Why pi? Because we have we are at the border. Why we are adding pi by 4? Because the one tan x is 1. And we need this angle in the first quadrant. So from the first quadrant, we get a we get a pi by four. So we will always use pi plus this theta and acute angle, which we get from the first quadrant. Now is it clear, Umir? Yes, sir. Okay. So we get here five pi by four. Now we will plot this. Okay. Now we will not write infinite. In trigonometric ratios, we will never write infinite. They will give you an interval. So here the interval is zero to two pi. So we have this one, 0, 2 here, we have a pi by 4. And next here, we have a 5 pi by 4. So we have three interval here, this one, first interval, second interval, and third interval. So 0 to pi by 4, pi by 4 to 5 pi by 4, 5 by 5 pi by 4 to 2 pi. We have three intervals. Which function you will use to check this as Abdur uh, has raised this query? Before finding the critical points, this one, make that table. You have three interval, or even I will make the interval for you. Okay, draw this table. So we have zero to pi by four. If you will see the question, then zero is incl included. So that's why we will use the close interval because here they have already given. What about the critical point? Who can tell me? Uh, uh, Rifat. Rifat, we will include this pi by 4 or not? Open interval or close interval for this pi by 4? Rifat, open or close interval for this pi by 4? Very good. This is open. Why it is open? Because this is a critical point and they are asking for strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. Next, we have pi, five, sorry, pi by 4 and 5 pi by 4. Who can tell me? Omir. Omir, second, we have this interval. Please tell me, pi by four is open interval or closed interval? So closed. Why close, Omir? Omir, why close? Pi by four is a critical point, Omir. Omir, pi by four is a critical point or not? Yes, it is. It is. And they are saying strictly increasing. So for strictly increasing, never take the critical point as close interval. Take open interval. Okay. If it is increasing or decreasing, then take the critical point as the close interval. Okay. Uh, Umay, tell me for 5, 5, by 4. This will be open or close? It will be open. Open. Very good. Next question is from Abdur. Abdur, the last interval we have is 5, 5, by 4 to 2, pi. So, Abdul, this 5 pi by 4 is open or closed? So, open. Good. 2 pi? So, close. Very good. This is close. Why it is close? Please check the question. Here you have less than equal to. So, in the question, they have already included this. 2 pi is not a critical point. So, we have these three intervals. Which function you have to use before that critical point? This one. Use this uh, sorry, Abdul. Sir, the close interval will only be from on 2 pi, right? On 2 pi and 0. Okay. Because in the question, they have uses equal to. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, we have these three intervals. All of you, please check for these three intervals and tell me the answer. And let me know still if uh, still anyone have a doubt in this question.
Uh, okay, first I will explain this to you. And okay, Abdul, so you are saying strictly increasing, decreasing, increasing. Okay, uh, let me check. Okay, uh, for uh, what is it out? Firth, what is it out in this? Uh, which one first? Again, this 10x is equal to 10 pi plus pi by 4. No, sir, that uh, quadrant part. Uh, okay, so in, uh, please remember like this, all school to college. Okay, so that means in the first quadrant, all are positive. In the second quadrant, sine and its reciprocal, that is cosec is positive. Here, tan and its reciprocal quad is positive. Here, cos and its reciprocal sec is positive. Okay, remember like this. So in the first quadrant, all are positive. In the second, sine cosec. In the third one, tan and quad. In the fourth, cos and sec is positive. Now here, we have a tan x is equal to one. So from this, we can say that, it, that this is positive, tan is positive for the first quadrant and for third quadrant. So we need the angle in the first and the third quadrant. Okay. So we have this tan x is equal to one. So what's the value of uh, tan 45 degree for? One, okay. So we will write tan x is equal to 10 pi by four because we need one. So here we get an x pi by four. Now, uh, the value of this tan is positive in third quadrant also. So we need the angle in third quadrant also. So we will write tan x is equal to tan pi plus pi by four. Okay, because I already told you to use pi and two pi. So we will write pi plus pi by four. So here we will get tan x is equal to tan five pi by four. So x is equal to five pi by four. Uh, is there any other doubt for her? Um, no, sir. Now it's correct. It's clear. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Abdur, I will check uh, your answer. So you are saying for the first one, it is strictly increasing. Uh, let me check. Okay, that's correct. And the second, you are saying it is decreasing. Mm. Yes, that's correct. And third one, you are saying it is in increasing. So let me check. Yes, that's correct. Your, uh, your answer is correct, Abdur. Very good. So... Uh, Fahad, Omir, and Rifat, please share your answer if it is done.
Okay, so Rifat, uh, Omer, and Fert, please share your answer if it is done. Uh, Fahad, no, that's not correct. No. Please try. Uh, I will again, I will check this interval. Okay. I will give you two, three more minutes. Please try this again. And uh, Omira and Rifat, please share your answer if it is time. Uh, is it done, Omir and Rifat? Yes, sir. Okay, so Omir, uh, will you please tell me the answer? Omir, can you tell me the answer? Please check here. This is the derivative of the function 0 to pi by 4. 0 to pi by 4 means 0 to 45 degree. Fert, can you tell me an angle between 0 and 45 and a standard angle? 30 degrees. 30 degrees. So please put 30 here. Cos 30 minus sine 30. So what we will get here, cos 30 is root 3 by 2 and it is minus 1 by 2. So it will be positive or negative? Fert? Positive. Positive because root 3 is 1.73. So, and by two, so this will be positive. This is positive greater than zero, so strictly increasing. Now, this is 45, 5 pi by 4, 45 degree to 5 means 
225. Okay. Between 45 and 225 for any standard angle. 75. 75. You know, 75 is not a standard. A standard. We know the angle 0, 30. 30 degrees. Which one? 60. 60. 60 is best. Okay. Because we know its value. Otherwise, we need to find it. So, cos 60 minus sine 60. Okay. For uh, cos 60 value is 1 by 2 minus root 3 by 2. So, what we will get here? 1 minus 1.73 by 2, which will give us negative. So, it is less than 0, strictly decreasing. Next is 5 pi by 4. 5 means 225 to 180, 360. So, for any angle between 225 and 360, So, two, so 300? Uh, 300, but we don't remember the value. So, is it fine if we will take 270? Okay, 270 means yes, 5 by 2. So, we know this value. Uh, so, write like this, cos 270 minus sine 270. Okay, so cos 270 is what? Zero. For this is 0. Minus sine 270 is minus 1. So, you will get a minus, you will get a 1. So, uh, did I explain to you how to remember the value of 270, 180? No, no, sir. Not yet? Okay, okay. I will just explain to you right now. Plus, okay, this is greater than zero. So, this is strictly increasing. Okay, in this way, you have to do this. Normally, what happened? Uh, students remember the value of sine 90, cos 0. But cos 180, sine 180, you normally forgot. So, I will form this chart for you. Please remember in this way. Right like this. Here you have a zero. So, what is sine zero for her? Zero. Zero. Uh, what is tan zero? Zero. Okay. Uh, what is then uh, what zero? This is not defined. What is cosec zero? This is not different. Okay, for zero, you have to learn the values. What is, uh, for, what is the value of cos zero? One. One. So one. Very good. What is the value of six zero? One. One, very good. So for zero, you know the value, but if I will ask you the value in with pi, with cos 180, okay, 180 is pi. So you will get confused. So how to remember this? Remember in this way. This is the right side. Okay. In the right side, cos and sec is 1 and 1. If you go to the left side, then what happened? Cos pi. Cos pi. Cos pi is equal to minus 1. And you have here sec pi, which is e also equal to minus 1. Okay. So cos and sec will be negative. So remember in this way, on the right side, you have cos 0, sec 0 as 1. In the left side, you have cos pi and sec pi as minus 1. Now, here, the rest of the value remain the same. So, cot pi earlier for cot 0, it is not defined. So, for this also, it is not defined. Cosec pi, not defined. Okay, sine pi, 0. Tan pi, 0. Okay, the rest of these values will remain the same on the left side. Only the values which are 1 will become minus 1. So remember in this way, if you have to find the value of pi, remember that what is the value with zero. If it is one, put a minus one. If it is zero, then zero remains zero. Same thing with pi, with pi by two. For 90 degree, you always remember the value. But if I will ask you about the three pi by two, you start getting confused. So uh, who can tell me? Abdul, what is the value of sine pi by two? So one by root two. No, no, no. Pi by two is 90. So zero. zero. No, no, no. Sign 90. So one, one. 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 Sign 90 is one. Okay. Omira and Rifa, is it clear? 
okay so sine and cosec is one if i will ask you cos pi by 2 what's the value of cos pi by 2 is zero good next is uh cot pi by 2 what's the value of cot pi by 2 zero next is what's the value of uh what's the next ratio uh tan tan pi by 2 is what not defined next is uh sec pi by 2 is what not defined uh, pi by 2 is 90 degree right yes that's correct okay so we have these conditions here sin 90 cos 90 is one cosec 90 is one one whereas these two are zero these are not defined so you must know these values but if i will ask you now sin 3 pi by 2 so abdul can you tell me what is sin 3 pi by 2 now abdul what is sin pi by 2 so 1 1 what is sin 3 pi by 2 so 1 minus 1 okay this is upper part so upper part is positive lower part is negative what is cosec 3 pi by 2 of 2 so minus 1 again minus 1 okay lower part will become negative so whatever the value you have positive in the upper part that is in pi by 2 the same value will become negative in the lower part rest of the value remain the same so for example cos 3 pi by 2 Abdul, what is the value of cos 3 pi by 2 0 good next is what 3 pi by 2 0 very good next is tan 3 pi by 2 10 3 pi by 2 is what not defined not, not defined. defined sec 3 pi by 2 is what not defined okay so please remember this step now i will give you three minutes for this please note down this then we will again go back to our main question so can you show the last slide yes sure Then, uh, okay, Rifat, Omir, is it done? Okay, Rifat, Omir, is it done? Yes, okay, then please note down this table and raise your hands once it is done, then we will start a new question. And, sir, how to remember that angles? 225 degree 360 that's all um there's no need to remember those values okay uh, which one 225 like this yes okay so there's no need to remember like 5 pi by 4 is 225 degree oh, sorry okay okay so no need yeah. to remember those values okay you have to find those those values so uh how can we do that for example you have a sign 225 okay so break this into 180 180 plus 45 so you have to calculate the value okay 180 plus 45 180 so sign remains sign 45 this line which quadrant what 180 plus 45 this is 180 you are adding 45 so third quadrant in third quadrant sign is negative put a negative sign okay i will again explain this to you in inverse trigonometric functions okay Okay, so please, please note down this. Raise your hand. We will start a new question.
Okay, Fahad, good. Abdul, Umir and Rifat, please raise your hand if it is done. Abdul, Umir, Rifat, is it? Okay, Rifat, good. Abdul and Umir, is it done? Good. Umir, is it done? Omid. Omid, shall we start next? Okay, uh, Omid, I'm going to start the next question. If you miss anything, please let me know. Okay. This we will do later on. This also later on. Hmm. Please try this question. Okay. So in some questions, what they will do, they will give you the interval. So in those questions, there's no need to find the critical parts. Okay. Some questions you will get where they will give you the uh, interval, for example, here. So there's no need to find the critical points. Just differentiate it and check for this interval that it is positive or negative. Okay. Please try this and confirm me once it is done. Uh, that's fine for that's correct. So please check for this interval. Cortex is positive for this or not? From zero to pi by two, cortex cortex is positive or not? Everyone, uh, please raise your hands if this is clear. Please check here. 
Uh, no, that's not correct, Abdul. Fx is equal to log sine x. Okay. So differentiated dash x, this is equal to derivative of log sine x with respect to sine x. Then sine sure, x. I got positive. Positive, very good. So that means it's strictly increasing. Okay, we will apply the chain rule here. Here f dash x is equal to what we will get 1 by sin x into derivative of sin s cos x. So here we will get f dash x is equal to cos by sin s cot x. So this is the derivative. Now we will check for interval for what is the interval? Uh, 0 to pi by 2. Okay, For x belongs to 0 to pi by 2. The cot x is greater than 0 because this lie in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, quad is positive. 0 to pi by 2 means first quadrant. In the first quadrant, quad is positive. So we write quad x is greater than 0. So this means derivative is greater than 0. Hence, fx is, hence fx is strictly increasing, is strictly increasing fx is strictly increasing on x belongs to 0 to pi by 2. Next, for x belongs to pi by 2 to pi. Okay, for pi by 2 to pi means second quadrant. So, first in the second quadrant, quad is what? Positive or negative? Uh, good for uh, Abdul, that is correct. First, for pi by 2 to pi, fx is what? For pi by 2 to pi, that is second quadrant, uh, quad x is what? Positive or negative for it? We have discussed now. Huh? All, remember like this, all school to college. Positive. Okay, negative. Here, sign is positive. Okay. Okay. So, for this interval, quad x is negative. So, this means f dash x is less than 0. Hence, Fx is, Fx is strictly decreasing on x belongs to x belongs to pi by two to pi. Okay. So please note down this, all of you. Raise your hands once it is done, so that we can start the. Next one. Okay, for very good. So we will do one last question after this, and the class is over. Uh, Abdul, you have already completed. Good. Rifat and Umir, please raise your hands if it is done. Rifat and Umir, is it done? So, uh, in the first case, it's strictly increasing or only increasing? Uh, for yeah. this interval, from 0 to pi by 2, it is okay. So, if a function is strictly increasing, then we will say that it is increasing also. Okay, but the converse is not true. So, if they will ask you that from 0 to pi by 2, is it increasing? Yes, it is increasing also. Uh, Rifat and Umir, is it done? Rifat and Umir, is it done? Okay, great. Umir, Umir, I'm going to start the next question. Okay, please let me know if you have a doubt in this one. So, Okay, so please try this question. Logarithmic function. Logarithmic function is what? Fx is equal to log x. You have this function. Please prove that this is strictly increasing from 0 to pi. 0 to infinite. Please try it. Uh, this is your last question. Okay, please let me know once it is done.
So, sir, f dash x is 1 by x. Yeah, that's correct. So, please check for this interval. f dash is positive or not. Uh, everyone, please check this. Find the derivative of this one, f dash x is equal to 1 by x. Okay. Now, please write for x belongs to 0 to infinite. If you will, please analyze this function. If you will put 0 to infinite, that is a positive value in place of x, this will be greater than 0. Okay. So, you can say f dash x is greater than 0. So how, is it positive, sir? how is it positive? Um, give me any value from 0 to infinite. Five. Five. Put here one by five. Is it greater than zero? Yes, sir. Okay. So in place of x, if you are putting positive value, then definitely the complete will be positive. Hence, uh, fx is is strictly increasing. Is strictly increasing on x belongs to zero to infinity. Okay. So we will end our class. I hope now you understood the method. So this week, please complete the assignment. Okay, please complete the increasing and decreasing first. After that, do the rate of change of quantities.